This is, these are hand saws. Uh, big bits for you know, just cutting through easier. And smaller bits. There is one with uh, cross teeth. It's called a rip saw, but we don't have one here. This is a scraper for scraping off any, you know, paint or anything. Uh, wire cutters for, well, cutting wires. <coughs> Tightening any, uh, any kind of bolts or anything we may have. Uh, pipe wrench, we might use it for um, putting together any piping or, uh, or maybe any bolts we may have. Just the standard screwdrivers. I don't know if there's any other types, but uh, standard is a uh, flathead. And this is a Phillips for um, the other types of screws. This is a chalk line for like when you're making a solid line uh, on any wood that's clearly visible. This is what we carry around. It's just a 25 foot uh, tape measure. These are both 100 foot. Oh, and another saw we have is the hacksaw. It's mainly used for metal work. This is a, a socket set for, well, sockets for bolts. T-square for, uh, like if we're using a sheet rock. Uh, we can put it at the angle and then we could easily cut or draw a line on whatever material we, we're uh, losing. This is a leveler. Uh, any big items that we're trying to straighten out and this is basically a smaller one. The one we carry into classrooms. Clamp. We use these just to uh, hold stuff down to you know, tables or whatever it is we're trying to hold it down to. Wrecking bar. Cat's paw. Flat flat bar. All three used to just uh, pry stuff off of, uh, like if it's glued to the table or something, we can easily pry it off. There's a T-bevel for uh, when we're, like let's say you're trying to capture a, a corner of a table, you could just put it on there, go to the angle, lock it, and then easily uh, mark your next piece of material. These are also squares. The smaller one is what we use normally for uh, just uh, trying, to, trying to get angles and marking lines, uh, help us mark lines on the wood for when we have to cut it. Right here is a combination square. It's basically just another one of, uh, one of these, but it's for uh, smaller work. Carpenter a real thick leg used for marking uh, wood, uh, not thick lines on wood. This is a trim hammer. It's uh, small, it's got a curved back, and it's what we use for most of our work. So we've got a waffle head, and a waffle hammer. It's got, it's got longer neck, and uh, it's got a flat, it's kind of flat up here. This is a, a ball pin hammer for, it's mainly used for metal work. Uh, we don't use that that often. And this is a, uh, a roofing hammer uh, used mainly for uh, shingles. It's a, a four pound uh, mini sludge hammer. It would just be, it's a, a 10 pound version, obviously for uh, full swings. We built some stuff like picnic tables, sheds, and some other things in our class. And uh, we decided for us like to go on uh, field trips and other stuff instead of having like sponsored fundraisers and stuff. We could um, we could uh, just sell some of the stuff we would make in class. So we decided to make uh, picnic tables, which would help out like some of the families and stuff, and some sheds. You know they're pretty convenient, so we uh, we made up some posters and stuff, and set them up around the school, and we ended up selling like a whole lot of picnic tables and stuff, and raised up a good amount of money. Some of the stuff in the sheds and stuff, it was kind of harder to do. So um, maybe if we would uh, probably get some more 
public attention about that, maybe some announcements and stuff to really sell more of that stuff. And some more emails and stuff, that would definitely help. Pretty much more attention on that, that would probably help us out a little bit more on the sales and distributions. But otherwise, pretty much, it was pretty good. It was pretty good with all the paperwork and all that stuff. And yeah, that was pretty good. Okay. Well, let's start. This is our hard hat. It protects you from anything that's falling, such as anything, like a house, but you'd be building that. That's probably not going to fall, so it protects you from maybe wood or something that might fall on your head. Um, these are safety glasses. They're Z87s. We have to make sure of that or it won't protect us from the nails that might fly back at you when you're drilling or sawdust or anything that might get in your eye, which is really annoying if it happens. These are our earmuffs. Um, they block out sounds from machines like these and other like electronic hand saws and stuff like that. Uh, these are pretty much the same thing but they're much smaller and on a string which is so convenient. Um, this is a safety harness. Like we're on, if we were on a higher place or higher up maybe on a ladder or on a roof or anywhere higher up, uh, something would be attached to the back on this and if we happen to fall, which Maybe if you weren't following some of the other safety things like the three points of contact where you should have at least three points on a ladder at all times or somewhere higher up, uh, then you would have this still protecting you. Um, that's pretty much it on safety besides smaller things like making sure to be protective of signs and other dangerous things in the workplace, make sure you don't mess around in horseplay and just be able to watch safety stuff. And, oh yeah, I almost forgot, uh, our gloves. <laughs> um, they just protect us from pretty much maybe splinters when we're moving older wood, and maybe if we're holding a bunch of nails, they won't poke into us and we won't get tetanus if they're rusty, which we shouldn't be using rusty nails, so that's bad for houses and buildings. But that's pretty much it. My shoes. Oh no! Oh no. Okay. Our shoes. I'm forgetting everything. We like to use steel toed boots or harder covered leather boots, like cowboy boots, which are amazing. But we like to use steel toed boots so if we drop anything on our feet, we won't get hurt. And our feet will be protected. And if I were to stump on her foot, it wouldn't hurt her. Now I have an example resume which we'll show you later. And the first thing on a resume, of course, is your name and your address and your phone numbers. If you have a cell phone, it'd be preferable to list both the home phone and the cell phone and an email. And then um, the employment objective, which just states your goals for the company if you are to be hired in the future, and then your skills and qualifications, which what makes you qualified for this job. And that should be your education level, your previous work experience, just general information that you would think would be necessary. Now, your resume should be short and sweet because if you have this paragraph of a long resume, your employer might just look at it and be too frustrated to read it and just throw it away. So it needs to be short and to the point so they can see it and look at it and see that you want this job. Now, for your work experience, you need to have job titles of the past, contacts from your employers, good contacts. And your education should be the name of the school, your education level, high school grad, college grad. And if you're a college graduation, you need to, um, you need to state how far a master's or whatever. And the next part and the best employment skill is your presentation, how you talk to your employer and how they respond to you. It's appropriate to be clean shaved, dressed well, and you need to be careful about how you speak. Cursing is unacceptable, anything like that. You need to speak clearly and you need to refrain from slurring and slang. This is a blueprint made by Capital Industries. Scale of 316s equals one foot with the model of 00125. 
This is a floor plan that shows the bathroom with a shower, a kitchen with a sink, and the living area and a porch. It shows the legend for the electrical circuit and where the, the circuits are located. This one shows the whole location. This one shows the plumbing for the cold water, while the other page shows the plumbing for the hot water. This is the plumbing for the gas and where the hot water is. This shows the drain lines for the bathroom and the kitchen. The next page shows how the drain lines are going to run down. On this page, it just shows the rust for the floor for the and how it's going to be planned. This shows the front side of the house with the space for the AC, windows and doors. And the other one continues with an overview of the house. On this page you see the end walls and their measurements while on the other side is just the measurements for the end interior walls for the house. It goes for the cabinets of 360 equals 1 foot.